today we'll discuss chapter 18 of functions and like we had this we had discussed last week about dependency management among other things function is the chapter that did follow and um so i'll start so like in our analysis function can be useful in some sorry in sharing applications to improve the functionality or optimization and to make your code cleaner for quicker debugging so the learning objectives for this particular chapter are we'll learn how to use functional programming techniques to make many controls at once. Uh, secondly, we'll understand how to use functions with reactives in the server. And lastly, we'll see walk through um, some user cases, some user use cases, sorry, where functions may be appropriate. So the outline for this particular chapter is we'll start with the first section, which is file organization, then we move to UI functions, and lastly, the server functions. So the first section is about file organizations. So fi uh, functions allow us to spread our code across multiple files, and this is where organization is a key. Um, they also make sure that to have, also make sure that you have an R directory in it and in it place all the large functions into the into their own script and you can call this script uh, my function dot r and um so this particular uh, script will contain collections could contain collections of smaller function that can go into one script uh, that is um, you can call it utils dot r script and for example if the functions are to be used in the ui you can use you can call that particular script ui.r. So Shiny uses similar storing conven conventions as R packages. Okay. So in this second uh, section, we look at uh, the UI functions and we look at also four examples as how we can make, make maximum use of functions. So functions are useful in reducing duplication uh, when we are talking about, when we're speaking about UI. So when we look at the first case where we are converting multiple sliders to a function. So here we have got uh, four sliders and we are looking at from range of zero and one with like one step and the starting value is 0 0.5. So as you can see, we are, we have, it's the same, it's like a same pattern and you're repeating it four times. So instead of doing so, we can use a function, we can write a function and then just uh, call that function to, um, to run the four sliders that we want. So this is a note that recognize the repeated pattern and extracts out a function. So you can see here it's, we, for all the four sliders, we, we want, to start from zero and to end at one, and the starting value will always be 0 0.5, and it is always increased by 0 0.1. So that is like a pattern in all the, the, the sliders. So instead of having the four, let's see how we can write a write out a function to do that. So here we have got a function called slider input 01. So we start, we start with a function ID, that's the argument in it, and then now we write out the function that it will be slider, slider input, um, ID, um, the label, it's the label for that particular ID. Then again, with the starting at zero, ending at one, um, and the, the very starting value is 0 0.5, and uh, we want it to increase with 0 0.1. So then with that, we just simply write the UI with the function that we had, we had before. <coughs> so like functions, <coughs> sorry. Like functions in our analysis, um, function in apps make more readable and efficient. If we need to change the behavior, we would only do it in one place. So for example, if you want to change, now I don't want it to start to end at one or rather to end later at five, you can easily just do that by changing in this particular functions instead of when we had, when we had repeated several functions, you may have to keep on changing this. And uh, well, human beings are too. There's some errors that can happen. So you may change the first three, then forget one. And you mean it might could be take some time before you realize uh, where the mistake 
came about. So that is the first example. The second example is we customize a date input with the dot, dot, dot uh, arguments. So here I've got a function called, uh, so this is for the US, US week date inputs. So this is the function uh, input ID, and then you can include other arguments in it. And uh, the date input function, as we know it, uh, you have the input ID. So this dot 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 means that you can add other arguments that are part of the date input function. I'll scroll that within a, in a minute. And we want the format to be day, month, and year. And uh, the days of the week disabled to be zero and six. I'm not too sure what this argument is doing here. So just as a reminder, the date input function has the following arguments. Yeah, so you can include all these arguments in your function if you wish to. And if you look at the third example, where we are creating radio buttons, that makes it easier to provide icons. So we have a function called icon radio buttons. The function contains arguments, input ID, label, choices, and um, so I'm assuming if you don't select, and then it will remain blank. If the selected is called stronas, null, sorry. So we have the names, we use the lapply function, uh, choices, and the icon. So the values that we want to, to be um, chosen, yeah, will have, if the names are null, okay. So if you have is null names, choices, and then names, well, I understand if this is empty, if it is not empty, otherwise choose choices. And now our radio button um, function, as you know it, we input the ID, the label will be the labels that we we'll, um, add, and the choices will be the names, the values will be the values, and the selected will be what is selected in the radio button. I hope that is clear. If it's not, I please, by all means, ask. <laughs> OK, and then our the last example is now, uh, this is when you have got multiple selections to reuse in multiple places. So here, uh, we have the state select input function. The, uh, the argument uh, is input of which you can also add other arguments and then select input, I, uh, the input ID. Uh, and the arguments that are also part of the select input, you can add them here. And the choice is equals to state name. Yeah, so these four functions above, if you are familiar with creating a package, I think as the author said, they can easily be stored in a package. But uh, to make sense out of it, you can then, after this, you can, after we're finished with this book, you can read about the engineering something something book. Yeah. Okay, and then, so part of it, let's discuss a bit of functional programming. So here we look at examples, uh, functions such as map, and this help reduce code further. So map is a function part of the par package. And so what we do here is we pass the variables for the slider to the built-in function, slider input that we had created above. And um, so here the virus will be alpha, uh, beta, gamma, and delta. And what we'll do here is the map will return a list of the sliders. So it will be, we are mapping each var to its own slider. So it will be like a list. But then when you then run this slider function into a fluid row, it will unpack that list to become children of that particular container. So I see there's a chat. Oh, yes, thank you, Federica. Yes, that particular book. Okay, I, I, have, I think I've only used map function once. I'm not so quite a guru when it comes to that, but well, I, I'm sure in, in a couple of months or so, I will 
be better. <laughs> okay, and then so another thing is we can use UI as, as data. So here we'll be turning a UI structure into a data structure to have more variety in inputs. So here we have um, a DF that defines the parameter of each control. So we have uh, alpha will be starting at zero, ending at one, and beta starting at zero, ending at 10. Then you have gamma starting at negative one, ending at one, and delta again starting at zero, ending at one. So we have this as a data a table, or, yeah. So, and then now a function where the argument names match the columns. So here they'll be matching the columns that we have. So you have mean and max. So here this, the slider inputs, the mean will be the mean column, the max will be the max column. The value since all of them will be starting, we want the starting value for all the sliders to be 0 0.1 and the step again to be increasing with 0 0.1. Yeah, and then now the P map to call my slider inputs over the bars. Um, yeah, I, sorry, I, I, I forgot to check the help for PMAP. If anyone has used a PMAP function can shed some light to us. I think uh, the PMAP will take uh, the list of inputs. So when you pass in the list, then we apply a function to every element of that list. Uh, I think it is going to return a list also. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so anyone has a question regarding the second section on the UI function? Question, comments, you're welcome. My own comment is was still on the first section because okay. if you look at the slider inputs in the book, I think there is still duplication looking at the slider inputs. In the function, there is still duplication in the function. They keep repeating slider, slider. If you go down a little bit, no, go up. Okay. Not the function, and not the, is the example. They did a function, the first example. The first, okay. Oh, here, yes. you mean here? Yes, yes. Um, I think because we have already created a function that will create that slider input because we want four sliders and they have got different names. So we have got a slider that is called alpha till delta. So this particular function, instead of repeating uh, the same same function each and every time, so the slider input, the slider input is create a function that will create a slider input. And then now the next step is now creating the UI. We now use the fluid row to like the setup of how we want the UI. And then um, basically just use this function that you have created and uh, create the four sliders that you wish to have in your UI. Does that make sense? Yes, but I think in this case, the map function or the PMAP is more neater because we reduce the code to uh, like three lines. Exactly, yes, 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 like we've seen here. It actually reduces to this example, yeah, exactly, yes. So it could be worth knowing about learning more about the PAR package. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for the comments. Brendan, I also saw you wanted to say something. Yeah, I don't quite remember what my question was anymore. Um, but, oh yeah, I think it was something along the lines of, so there are a lot of, you know, in advanced R or in R for data science, there are chapters on writing functions. I guess I'm wondering if there's anything that you know whether it's just common practices that we should make note of for creating shiny apps and writing functions versus writing functions in other contexts yeah um so i i must confess i've been one person who used to repeat codes several times this one code that is meant to do a task in different data sets and i have had to learn how to write functions to reduce that dependency i I think basically the functions in this case, they help. Um, and so first of all, we, we say that if you have got the UI function, you can easily, if you have a, a couple of functions, you can store them in their own scripts. And then I, I think in a, 
So you have got a project that has the app, the app uh, dot R uh, for the Shiny. And then you have got another function, another R script that contains also your functions. So we'll see in the in a couple of slides um, how the author advises us to have uh, functions um, in like its own separate script. But then if the functions that are used in the UI or server, then you can uh, you can add those function. But uh, then to one of towards the very end of the chapter, we'll see that a drawback for having for writing functions. So hence now we discuss the shiny modules chapter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Thanks. Okay, uh, so let's speak about now the server functions. <clears throat> so here long reactives should be put in a non-reactive function outside the server. And the reason for this is that it is easier to debug. It is easier to debug and it is easier to tell what inputs were passed to a function versus a reactive expression. So this is a note that the key benefit of a function in the UI reduces duplication, while functions in a server, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really sorry for the spelling mistakes here and there, uh, while functions in a server tend to be around isolation and testing. So we'll also look at a couple of examples. So the first example is reading uploaded data. So here we have got, I, I think we saw such an example um, in, the, in a previous chapter, we have a server is a function we have. So this is like what we know, how it looks like. So we have got the data is reactive. We want to input the file. So, so I'm assuming this file has been called in the UI as well as the placeholder. So the exit, so this is the file extension. And then you can switch between a CSV file, a TSV file. And then uh, this validate, this is an invalid file. Please upload either a CSV or a TSV, yes, in case if you upload an Excel file, this will be like a prompt that tells you that. And then the output is that we want to see the head of each data that has been uploaded. So it will render a table uh, and we'll see the head of the data and uh, input and I also think this is this will be in like the UI part as well. This end here. So in so here we can see that we are repeating the for the CSV and for the TSV. The only difference is the delimiter is either a comma or a tab. So to do that, um, so this particular function will be in its own script. So we have got a function for load. A load file where we have the arguments is name and path. And then like what we had, uh, the tools for the file extension and for that particular file name and the switch where we are, you are switching if you wish to have, if you're either uploading a CSV or a TSV file. And then so validates works, validate sorry, work similar to stop outside of Shiny. So we have so we have got a function that we will use to upload your to upload your CS, sorry your data files. So let's put that function in the server now. So here we have got the data again. We want the required to be a file. And then this func we call this function the load file. We input the file and the name. And then we have got the input file and path. Yeah, um, because I was trying to understand how this function is working, calling here. So we have got input dollar sign file. So I'm assuming this is the placeholder in the UI. And this is the name that for the argument from the load file function and the same for the data path, sorry. The data path. Okay. Um, and again, uh, we will to check the 
um, what the output will again be the head of the data. So uh, not generally better to keep reactive and non-reactive parts of the app as separate as possible. Yeah, um, any comments, any question? Okay. So let's move to the internal functions. So here, if the function needs to use an input, output, or session, it makes more sense to reach the functions directly in the server. So here have an example where we have the server, we know as it is. So here is, we have different tabs. So we have a switch page, which is a function. So a function with argument i. We use the update subset panel. Here we input the wizard. Um, and then we select, so we'll, this paste will be pasting. So if it is I is page one, then it will be page underscore one. Yeah. And then now we use this, we use the observe event. I've forgotten what observe event function is doing, but um, where we are switching in between the different pages. So if you're at page 12, you switch, you switch to page 12 and we'll be using this particular function. So if you are at page 21, and then it switches to page one, I think, yeah. Okay, uh, all right, that was it for the server functions. Anyone has a comment or a question? Yeah, sorry, could you, for this last part, explain again why it makes sense to just write the function like within the server versus just outsourcing it elsewhere? Or like, yeah. Okay. Um, to be honest, I also don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, like, even though I kind of get the intuition, like, um, maybe it's for a specific session, but like, I don't see what would happen if you were to just like source it from another file, you know what I mean? Yeah, yes. Mm. Maybe I could try it and then see what happens. Um, okay. Um, so Olu says that observe event respond to event like reactive inputs, values and expressions. Okay, yes. Thank you for that. Is it because of we have this update tab set panel, which is used in the server part? So if you're creating a function that depends, so we see one the major um, fun, um, the major function of this switch page is the upset, uh, update sorry tab set panel, and then it will be worth to have it within the server and like having it outside. Yeah, I, I think. <laughs> Okay. And um, with that, uh, we, the summary is that we see, you have seen that the functions allow you to separate reactive and non-reactive code and spread your code out, out over multiple files, making it easier to see the big picture, a shape, the big picture shape of your app and by moving complex logic out of the app into a regular R code, hence making it easier to experiment, iterate, and test. However, one of the drawbacks of the functions that we have learned in this particular chapter is that they generate only UI and server components and not both. And therefore, we we'll learn about shiny modules in the next chapter, which could coordinate UI and server into a single object. Yeah, um, it was a short chapter, <laughs> but it made so much sense about not using, um, like reducing redundancy and dependent, dependent, let's say for the UI and for the server, uh, making it easier to test and, and, and yeah. <laughs> But one thing that I, I I also have a question is about this particular 
but about how we are using the function yeah here like why we could link like Brennan said why can't you have this function outside the server but rather inside the server okay uh anyone has a question or a comment we are just the four of us <laughs> Okay, I see no question, I see no comments. So I, uh, it was a really, really short chapter, but it made so much sense. So in our next uh, chapter is on shiny modules. No one has, I'm also afraid of leading that chapter. I have to be honest. <laughs> Um, but we'll see, we have got a week till next week, Saturday. We'll, we'll see, I, I, I may study a bit of it and then probably finish up the next weekend. Yeah, um, but we're almost through. We have got five more chapters to go. Okay, I will stop sharing. Yeah, uh, so thank you so much. It was a very, very short chapter, but it made so much sense. Yeah, at least now we know that there are other ways of improving our codes. Yeah, instead of repeating, we can easily uh, use write a function that can help and to easily create, let's say, a UI. And like you've seen, it's that there are functions that will be worth having them on its own files. And the functions, if they're used, for example, in the server or in the UI, you can easily use them in the UI and, and in the server, respectively. Yeah. Um, if there's no other, other comments or question, I think we can stop here and meet next week. All right. Great. Thanks, Lisa. Okay. Thank you. May you have yourself a good... Uh, afternoon, morning, morning or evening. <laughs> you too. Bye. We'll see you next week.